As you know, each week we also um, visit a good cause. And this time we visited Refuge, which is a domestic abuse charity. And let's take a look at this interview. And also I'll be showing you a campaign video as well about, you know, how, how they help people. And I'm not sure, I'm being told maybe the video's not ready. Is that correct? Let's show the campaign video first of all then. Let's go to that first. Hiya everyone, I'm sorry I haven't been online much lately but I'm back, I'm here, um, I've had a bit of a rough time but I'm going to be doing a video today on how to cover up. I'm first going to start with some foundation, if you apply a colour that is just gently off tone with your own skin tone you can cover any fresh bruising, so just apply it lightly to start off and you can build it up as you go. If you've got a lot of bruising from being pushed hard against a coffee table, you can gently apply layer after layer and you will cover it up slightly. I know it might hurt. Just just try your best. And that's that's looking a little bit better so far. For my lips I'm using a little bit more foundation. You might want to put concealer on over any splits that are caused from watches or rings. If you've got some bruising from a jealous type of partner, you can always just put your hair down to the side. If it's not long enough, don't worry because a scarf is ideal for this. So I'm going to be using a scarf and you can kind of hide it and cover it up. So that's perfect like that. Okay, so don't cover it up. This is a really disturbing campaign video by Refuge. And I did visit Refuge recently and did an interview with them. And take a look at this. And if you or anyone needs any help regarding this, you can contact them as well. I'm here with Lisa King today from Refuge. And she's just going to be telling us a bit about what Refuge does, first of all. So Lisa, thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview with us. What, what is Refuge and what do you actually do? Thank you. Um, Refuge is a national domestic violence charity. So we work around the country to provide a range of domestic violence services to support women who are experiencing domestic violence. And on any given day, our services are supporting 1,600 women and children. Now when you say to raise awareness, um, is, it the, is it the case that there's many women that are in an abusive relationship and they don't actually realise that they're in one? Yeah, sadly that is exactly the case. Very few people actually understand what domestic violence is and can identify with domestic violence. Lots of people can identify with the physical, kind of the broken bones, the black eyes, the bruises, but very few people understand that domestic violence is a much bigger subject than that. It's all about power and control. And one of the techniques of control that a perpetrator often uses is to be purposefully charming one minute and angry and raging the next. And we describe that as a Jekyll and Hyde type personality. And that behaviour is, is, is very disarming and confusing. I noticed there's a photo there of Princess Diana. Can you tell us what that's about? Yeah, Princess Diana very kindly came to refuge in 1983 when the name for our organisation changed from Chiswick Women's Aid to Refuge. Princess Diana was a, a contact of my boss, Sandra Hawley, and she has taken refuge from that one building to what is now the largest domestic violence specialist provider in the country. I know you've had loads and loads of success stories, but is is there any particular one that's really like caught your attention that stood out for you? Yeah, I've heard lots and lots of stories, um, but I was particularly touched by one that Refuge received just a couple of weeks ago. The lady who emailed said, I just wanted to say a very huge thank you for the support I received from the helpline on two occasions over two years ago. I still visit your website now as a comfort blanket to remind me that I made the right choice in splitting from my husband. He still to this day blames me for everything. He treated me with little respect and I'm still unable to bring myself to tell my family the details of how he called me dull, boring and inhibited. He accused me of wearing too much makeup, screamed at me so much that my daughter used to cry herself to sleep, constantly threatened to tell my employer what I was really like, and the list goes on. 
He never once hit me, but the emotional and psychological fear was terrifying. Please don't ever underestimate the power of the work Refuge does. You give a voice and you're reassuring, and that's what I needed. It took 12 months of living hell, even after I rang to get the courage to leave, but I did it in the end. A further 16 months down the line and life is tough. I'm a single mum of two with a full-time job, but nobody shouts or threatens. My home is my own and I'm safe. At Christmas, I don't buy cards, I donate the money to Refuge, and I shall do that from every year. You know, I've been doing my job for nine years and I'm really touched and I think that's really powerful and that says so much. You know, someone who was alone and isolated, reached out, she was brave and courageous, she got help and her life is different now and she's safe and she's rebuilding a home for herself and her daughter. If you are in this situation as well, do get in touch with Refuge. The details also will be on our website, chrissybshow.tv. Don't feel like you're alone and remember domestic violence isn't just about physical abuse as, as you've been explaining to us. So please, please do get in touch if you are going through this situation. Lisa, thank you so much for thank the interview. Thanks very much. So if you'd like more information about this charity, more details can be found on our website. So now, just before we go to our guests actually, just a few strange addictions, um, but actually that caused a lot of harm and one a fate, something fatal. Just this year, there was a lady who died from drinking 10 litres of Coke a day, and that's Coca-Cola by the way, not cocaine. Okay, so just, you know, some people that really like Coca-Cola, but she actually died because of it. A diehard Chinese fan of England football team who died after continuously watching the games for 11 nights on the trot. So he was hardly getting any sleep and he was also smoking and drinking during that time. And that apparently led to his death. And a tanning addict mother who was arrested for allegedly taking her five-year-old daughter into a tanning booth in New Jersey. So... People can be addicted to anything, it seems, and our guests are also going to speak to us about their addictions. Now, you all had different addictions at some point. Now, I have to let everyone know that this is actually my mother-in-law to my right here, Julie. Now, you did come on last minute, so thanks, Mum, for coming on. <laughs> now, the reason I, I asked her to come along is all because I actually lived with her for, for a period of time, and I witnessed um, how the, the addiction actually affected her and, and the family, and it was quite bad, wasn't it? Was. Can you tell us how it started? Well, I know, but just for our viewers at home, how did it all start, Julie? Well, um, my marriage broke up and um, I felt inadequate. I started drinking just to forget, um, mm -hmm. to get rid of the pain. And it just went on from there. It became a habit, mm -hmm. even though um, I didn't re recognise that it was a habit after a few years. But I kept drinking every day. I'd find the money to buy alcohol and drink. And uh, sometimes I knew at one point that, um, that I had a problem because I couldn't go one day without alcohol. Um, sometimes how, how much were we talking? How much were you actually drinking? Um, it started off by just uh, half a bottle of brandy because I like brandy. Mm. Half a bottle of brandy and then it went to a bottle. Then it's brandy. Every day? Every day. Brandy, sometimes mixed with vodka. Yeah. Brandy, um, chasing with lager or um, baby sham, when I, mean, I could afford it, champagne. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just went from a bottle to a bottle and a half. Uh, at the end of the evening, I'd be so paralytic. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, I'm gonna, we're going to go into it more mm -hmm. in, the, in just a minute. So I'd just like to ask my other two guests, Nikki as well, you were, you, what were you addicted to? Uh, I actually had an eating disorder um, right. for a long time and uh, it's such a common thing nowadays, especially among women but, and men too. Mm -hmm. And um, although it's, it's sort of similar to alcohol, it's just sort of this very quick form of pleasure that you need. That, um, and mine started um, sort of late teens, early 20s and it was when uh, there was a lot of pressure on me with having to do well at school and get mm. a really good job and working yeah. long hours. And then I started my own business and um, again, just very, very long hours and just turning to food for some comfort or something to do as well. Did you not have much of a social life because you were so like, focused yeah. on, on like, the business yeah. and stuff? Yeah, a lot of it is that. And it, food is your sort of um, friend. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, that's your new... It's, it's I, very, love, I know what you're talking about because I love food. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it just what creeps up on you, doesn't it? It's like, you know, you'll, you'll just say, yes. oh, I'll just, you know, one day I'll, I won't go out, I'll just stay in and I'll, I'll just eat mm -hmm. some cake or whatever. And actually, then it becomes a real problem later down okay. the line. So... 
All right, so we are going to be delving more into that as well. Now, Joseph, we're going uh -huh. to talk about yours just after the break. Okay. Now, yours, some people would actually say, well, Joseph's addiction is not really an addiction because a lot of men do it and there's no problem with it and it doesn't harm anyone. Well, when you hear his story as well, you're going to, you are going to realise that this was an addiction because it was really, really affecting him. And we'll let you know what that addiction was after this break. Welcome back to the Chrissy B Show. And tonight we're speaking about addiction. Now, if you would like to share maybe an experience that you've been through, maybe like a family member of yours was addicted, and you'd like to share how you coped and how you tried to help, you can give us a call on 020-7686-6300, or you can email me on chris at chrissybshow.tv. Now, there's a lot of celebrities, as you know, in the news all the time, speaking about you know the different addictions that they've had. And just some of them, for example, Jamie Lee Curtis, she said, um, she's 51, and she said that she'd become addicted to painkillers after a routine surgical procedure at age 35. And it says here, the actress who played mum to trouble star Lindsay Lohan in the movie Freaky Friday also admitted to drinking heavily at times to ease loneliness. In 2010, after more than 10 years of being sober, Curtis said on the Today Show, my recovery is the single greatest accomplishment of my life. <clears throat> Without that, the rest of my life would have fallen apart. Recovery is an acceptance that your life is in shambles and you have to change it. Right? Mm. I was lucky. I didn't have to lose. <clears throat> I didn't have to lose anything. Excuse me. Now, a lot of people, they don't actually admit to having an addiction because it's not an easy thing to admit to, is it? I mean, how did you guys find it? Did you, when you actually were you in denial a lot of the time, or? Yes. Yeah. It was like something that just came calling. So. Oh, we haven't told people what you're addicted to, first of all, no. did we? Okay, so I did say before the break that um, Joseph was addicted to something that some guys would say, look, it's normal, it's a normal guy thing to do, but what were you addicted to, Joseph? Tell well, everybody. I know it might sound strange, but I was heavily addicted to pornography. Mm -hmm. you know? And what's the harm in that? Some well, guys would say or some people would say. They will say that, but there is quite a lot of harm in it, and it's mostly to do with your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, because when you develop a, that bad habit, it's like you get deeper into it. So you want to see more, more vile, disturbing stuff. And that plays on your mind because that's not reality. You need mm -hmm. to come back to reality when everyone is wearing clothes. But then... How did it start? Well, it started from school. You know, that's the first what time... What age are we talking about here? About 15. Okay. 15, 16, so... Because there are a lot like kids now that are already watching pornography on, on phones. Yeah, it's really disturbing. Very, very young it? age, especially mm -hmm. with the internet as well. Yeah. And I remember it was, they, you know, they built this new IT lab in my school. And then all of a sudden, we found out about pornography, the whole class. So that's how I knew about it. Didn't the teachers know? We yeah. locked the teachers outside. Literally, oh we would lock the teachers outside and then they would put it on the projector. So that's how bad it was. And then mm -hmm. obviously people found out about it. They'll never, you know, go on like they're proper into it in school. But it's like when I went home and I sat down on my desktop and then I started looking at all the passwords that, you know, they were sharing in class. So that's mm -hmm. how I got into it. So you're saying like maybe like for some of your classmates, it was just like a, you know, fun thing to do and that, that will be it. And when they go home, they'll just have like a normal life. But in your case, you actually took it one step further. Yeah, I yeah. did, and I'm sure most of them did as mm -hmm. well. But when we're around each other, it was like, oh, nah, I don't watch that. Nah, nah, nah. But as soon as you go home, you take your bag off straight away. You get on your on the desktop and you start watching pornography. That's how it started. Yeah. And it was gradual, you know? Okay. Now, Nikki, mm -hmm. are you actually in the position to help people today? Can you tell us a bit about what you do? Yeah, so I, um, I'm a leadership coach for women in business, so professional women who um, are up to sort of CEOs or uh, actors, artists, people who are creating big things with their lives are quite ambitious. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I'm finding with um, these women and men too, but mm -hmm. I just coach women, yeah. is that um, the thing that stops them from getting where they really want to go is that they hold themselves back and they are, um, they hold themselves back from sort of lack of self-esteem and confidence okay, yeah. and um, they're in positions where they might feel anxious or stressed out. But they've also got like ambition, haven't they? To yeah. Uh, yeah, and the point of the coaching is helping them to overcome these things so okay. they can get there. 
Um, but what happens and why sort of addiction is quite close to my heart as well, and because I've sort of suffered through it too, mm -hmm. is that um, this sort of lack of self-esteem or low confidence or whatever it is can manifest into an addiction because mm -hmm. an addiction um, like food or alcohol or drugs or whatever it is takes the reality away and yeah. just makes them you know, think they're on track, but actually they've just got this sort of crutch that they're just leaning on a bit. They're using like some kind of, like, they think it's some kind yeah. of control, like they can control yeah. it and they can't. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay then. So you help these women through these yes. kind of things as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay then. Yeah, it's, it's quite, um, I think n now having gone through the recovery process too, it is, takes a lot, to, a lot from you, but the reward is huge. And so it's so amazing to see these people move away from their bad habits. Right. Okay then. Actually, we've got a caller on the line. Let's, let's go to our first caller. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Hi, what's your name? Christina. Hi, Christina. What did you have to share with us? Hi. Uh, right, um, I see that you're talking about addictions today. You know, I, I wanted just to share uh, my side of, you know, because uh, my dad was, was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, it does affect people, not only the person who is addicted, but also everyone else around the person. And yeah. um, at that time, I was I was very little, me and my three other brothers. And I remember, um, I mean, I even remember how it all started. It's, I mean, it's so bad that it started with him, with my dad, because he he failed in business. Right. And then it went on to uh, destroy his marriage. And then my mother became ill as a result of so much stress. It's like one thing and affected started... the other. Yes, it was mm -hmm. like a, a, um, a snowball thing, uh, mm -hmm. if, if, you, if, you, if you want. Um, at that time, I was very small, and we all depended on mom and dad, uh, as every ch any child. And uh, we used to see fights in the house, my mm -hmm. mom, my, my dad beating up my mom. Yeah, it's terrible. Um, it was but he wasn't like that before, before no, the problems. He wasn't. My, my, my father is a very proud man. He likes business. But at mm. some point in, in his life, he, he couldn't you know, reach where he wanted to reach. So it was like a failure to him. Mm -hmm. uh, looking back, I understand that. Um, and he started drinking to feel better and to forget about his failure and that went on to destroy his marriage and then we met my parents separated many times uh, it, it was horrible I mean how we, old are you at the time Christina? sorry how old were you at the time when all this was going on it started when I was 12 oh, yeah wow. precisely 12 years old my brothers were younger and uh, as a result, I had to, because I have a sister, she's 13, I was 12, and the other two boys were younger. I had to actually stop studying to go to work and, um, oh, and help the whole family because my dad was so addicted that he could not even leave the house. There was no food in the house. My mom mm. would always try to kill herself every time we went out. Oh, she found so herself. It, it, was, it was, you know, total... <laughs> chaos in the house and then my brothers turned to to smoking weed uh they were not even uh what it, so it, it basically nine. affected the the entire family then it wasn't just yeah, the, your dad's problem it just led to your mum being sick you having to leave yeah. you know your education to mm. to help you know deal with things as well that's really terrible is he still addicted today christina no, he's he stopped drinking he's not an alcoholic anymore mm -hmm. uh he he does like his drink yeah. Uh, you know, when he with his meals, but and and we we are always very careful to to tell him that be careful. You know, remember where you came from. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes he falls <laughs> for incantations, yeah. but he's not as before like totally dependent on it. But it mm -hmm. was a hard time. We went through a lot because of 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 that of of drink. Okay. Well, I'm glad he's but not addicted too. anymore. And thank you no. so, so much for, for sharing that with us. Thanks very much for your right. call. Thank you. Okay, so, you know, thank it you. is a terrible thing. Like family members do bear the brunt of it. And I've just got some 
some facts here of how to recognise if a loved one is addicted and you can try and get help for them. Um, for example, there's things here like they start, obviously if it's something like alcohol, you, you probably know because the person smells of alcohol, but other addictions, for example, they start turning up late for functions or dates, they have trouble with illness more than usual, they have more problems at work than usual, um, they start to appear withdrawn, um, they appear to have a new set of friends who they're highly involved with but you don't get to meet. That must mm. be, that's a common one, isn't it? Yes. Did, you, did you go through that? No. No? You're mm. just drinking on your I own? Just, All yes. right, okay then. <laughs> um, they have lapses of concentration or memory. They stay up later at night and sleep in during the day. You must have been up late at night. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Um, they have more trouble than usual getting it together in the morning and they appear surprisingly secretive about specific aspects in their lives. So these are things that you can look out for and maybe actually you, you're going through some of these things and you may be trying to convince yourself that you're not actually addicted to something but it's, there's too many warning signs there aren't there. You have to, there's a point where, I mean in the case of Christina's dad, he, he started drinking because of something that he'd lost. He, he, instead of talking about it with someone, he just turned to the booze. Mm. And I think that's where the problem starts when we don't talk to someone about it and that's how it can yeah. escalate, right? Yeah. Mm. Do, you, do you go through that a lot in the people that you deal with? Nikki? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything in the list you said, you know, the secretive, you get quite fanatical about it and compulsive and your behaviour, because you're, you need it, it's like no one else matters. You're, you're not happy until you get it. Yeah. And so it really can affect a lot of other people and distance a lot of people too. That's right. So, Let's yeah. read something else as well, another one of our celebrities. This one was um, Robert Downey Jr., as you probably know already. After numerous arrests for drug possession and stints in rehab and jail, Robert Downey Jr. finally kicked his addictions in 2001. So that's a positive thing. The actor credits plenty of yoga, kung fu and his wife, Susan Levin, for keeping him in check. Remembering his challenging past also helps Downey stay well. I don't pretend it didn't happen, he told Playboy in 2010 interview. More than anything, I have this sense that I'm a veteran of a war that is difficult to discuss with people who haven't been there. So in his case, he yoga helped him, kung fu, and the support of his wife. So it mm. does really does help when you've got family around to support you. Mm. Mm. Although some, some, some family members didn't know about <laughs> it, did they, Mum? <laughs> no, not the secret <laughs> drinking, no. Yeah. Even though I came from a family that were alcoholics. But I was secretly drinking as well. We would be together, I'd drink with them, but then I'd go home and continue drinking. Now, the only quiet. time I actually realised that it was a really big problem, and I knew you used to go out drinking because mm. I could smell the booze on you. But there was one particular, I hope you don't mind me saying this. Nope. <laughs> there was one particular night when I was already upstairs asleep with, with Michael. And then I hear someone staggering through the door, fell over, Manager staggered up the stairs. I could hear all this going on. I was still half asleep. And then she just filled up the whole sink. <laughs> you vomited in the sink. And the thing is, the next day you didn't remember anything, nothing nope. at all of this. And Michael actually cleaned up everything. And like, how did you feel? I know it's like a, you don't mind, I know you don't mind me saying this because mm -hmm. you know you want to help people that maybe yes. going for the same problem. But finding out that that had happened and your son had to clear up all the mess. How, how did that feel? I felt ashamed but I still couldn't stop drinking. Yeah. I did try. Um, I'd go sometimes a week, two weeks, a month, but I'd always go back to drinking. Mm -hmm. Always something would happen, I'd go back to drinking. And how did that affect your, your finances, your work, all that stuff? Well, I used to go to work drunk. I worked for an organisation that helped alcoholics, but I used to go to work Did, did you just hear that, what she said? She worked, you would, you would an alcoholic, and you were working for who? For which? an organisation that helped alcoholics. Right, and it didn't click at that point? No, no, no. Did you feel like a bit of a hypocrite, maybe? Yes, but it, it didn't really matter. Mm -hmm. What I used to do was chewing gum, mouth spray, lots of perfume, <laughs> and go to work You know, you can day. still smell it though, can't you? Yeah. I, I, I do reckon when I smell it on other people, you can still smell the alcohol even for all of, all of that stuff. Yeah. Well, we are actually approaching another break and there's a particular video that I found on YouTube that I wanted to speak about just before we go into things a bit more. Now, this girl, um, she was very, very angry because her boyfriend 
would not get off the Xbox and he was playing on these games like all day and she had enough and so she decided to smash up his Xbox. So let's take a look at this first of all and then after the break we're going to find out how he reacted but let's watch this first part. Like many girls out there today, I have a boyfriend who is constantly playing video games. I mean, it's like 10 hours a day. It's ridiculous. Well, I'm sick of being bored. And I and I and still his routine remains constant. So now I feel like I need to do something drastic to get my point across. So let this be a lesson to all you video game addicts out there who are ignoring your girlfriends. Cause she just might be a little crazy. Look what I got. Well, there it is. I didn't ruin it as much as I'd like to, but I don't think it's gonna work. Welcome back to the Chrissy B Show. Now, before the break, you saw a very irate young lady smashing up her boyfriend's Xbox. So let's see how he reacted when he came home, when he found his beloved Xbox in pieces. It's right here! <laughs> what the... What? Why? What the f*** did you do? I broke your Xbox. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> this is I'm cool. Like, why would you, like. I'm teaching you a lesson. Don't you ignore me my anymore. Hard drive too? You better hold my warning card for this. Okay, so he didn't explode. But on the other hand, he didn't actually ask his girlfriend, you know really find out why she did it and all he was worried about was you better hope the warranty covers this meaning that the first thing in his mind was I have to replace this thing not like why did she do it so that shows mm. the extent sometimes that people don't realize how much they're affecting their their friends and, and loved ones so it's really I think it's a really even though it's quite humorous yeah. sorry it is a bit funny but mm. at the same time we have to see the serious side of it as mm. well mm. now just before I know like you've all got something to say about how you overcame the the actual addiction in your lives as well but Joseph can you just tell us the extent first of all of of the pornography how bad it got for you and how it affected you okay well um like any sort of addiction it's like you just want more you don't get satisfied i mean you'd be looking at the same stuff but then you want to see different characters and i'll be like on the internet for hours you know it affects your studies it well at that time i was working already okay and it really affected my work because like you were reading on that list i would spend the whole night you know watching pornography and then I have to go work at seven o'clock in the morning. Oh my gosh. So I would literally go to work and my mind is totally messed up. And the type of work that I do as well is dealing with people. So can you, you can just imagine when someone stands in front of me, you know, that thought is just bombarding your mind and mm -hmm. you can't even pay attention to what they're saying. Everything that you were reading from the paper was true. Yeah. And it's surprising because most of them I can relate to p pornography, uh -huh. you know, so that's how, that's how bad it really got. And I would be late to get to work because... Were you happy, Joseph? 
I was not happy. Some guys, maybe some people would say, oh yeah, it's a good thing to watch it and you know, it's just it's a fun thing, it's a hobby. It's not but a good thing, it's that? not It's not normal. You're meant to, because you started, I started like withdrawing from people, mm. you know? It's like, okay, I could be with girls, but then I was like, what's the point? I could just go and watch pornography. So it's bad. Yeah. You know, even with my family as well, became really secretive with it, you know? Mm. It's like, I will be in my room and for hours and everyone will be like in the living room. I don't want to be with them. Why? Mm. Because that addiction was there in my bedroom. So that's mm. how bad it got. My mind wasn't happy. And then the, the really bad part was the moral side of it as well. Because I knew mm. it's not right, you know? Because then it gets really f bad as in, you start seeing family members as in, okay, you're looking at that lady, she's been abused, but that could be your sister yeah. or that could be your mum. So then that started really affecting my mind and that's when it got really, really serious and I knew that I had to get some help. Okay then. Mm. Now, Nikki, I know you, like you said, you, you deal with like ladies, women that you coach them and everything. What's the most common type of addiction would you say that they um, get involved in? Overspending, really. <laughs> Um, and but that's all right, isn't it, for us girls to do? <laughs> <laughs> you think so, don't yeah. you? Like, I'll just go buy a new dress and it just becomes, again, like, it's just one, it, it's just that form of instant gratification and mm. you just need it and you think that you need that to look good all the time and it's just spirals. But uh, overeating, alcohol, they're the main alcohol things. Well. I think eating a lot, like controlling it, either anorexia or overeating, both of those. Mm -hmm. can become, you know, our addictions. Okay. Yeah. Now, I know the three of you today are completely different. You've gotten over the problems that you were going through before. Can you each tell us, maybe we can start with you, Nikki, actually. Can you tell me how you um, actually overcame that eating disorder and how you are today? Yeah. Um, so, I think the first thing is just owning up to it and, and really addressing it and yeah. actually getting some support from your family or from a support group who can understand and relate to it. Like I think you mentioned a celebrity said that by, you know, having some people who understand it yeah. um, is good. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> um, lots of people are just like, you know, I remember my dad saying once on Nick, it's just a cake, not oh, really understanding. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, understand, so yeah. Um, you need to find that support group. And I think um, for me, having that owning up to myself and also the key thing I think is to understand what life could be like without it and like what yeah. is the point of overcoming it because it becomes such a stability for you and such a crutch that you think well it's fine I'll, I'll just keep it, it doesn't matter I can have it mm -hmm. but actually you, you're missing out on so much by having it yeah. so I think the key for me was understanding what life I could have and um, you know, relationships, family, work, everything would be so much better without it. Yeah. So it's keeping and that Is that really what you're quick. experiencing today then? Like that? Yeah. Well, how, it, how are things today for you? It's like freedom. It's like mm -hmm. complete liberation from just like you can have a life that you just can enjoy and you don't, there's no, no shame or guilt or constant mm -hmm. in your head. <laughs> that you have to go and do something else. You yeah. can pay attention to what you really want to do in life and it's lovely. Right. And I know you love your job as well. I love others now. Job. Okay, that's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. That's lovely. And Julie, now I know in your case, now I think each person finds a different, can find like a different way of help. Now I know in your case, you actually went to church and received spiritual help as yes, well, yes, as yes. well as other kind of advice. Can yes. you tell us like how that <coughs> affect, how it helped you and like how you are today? Advice and support and... Uh, was it having someone to talk to as well, like yes, you said? Yes, the support and um, prayers. Um, I had prayers set for me and um, I took on board everything, that the advice that was given to me mm -hmm. and I put it into practice and my life changed. I'm no longer depressed and I'm happy. Yeah, you had loads of other... I mean, we could do like a whole show on just your <laughs> problems because she had loads of other problems, depression, loads of illnesses and all sorts of stuff, didn't yes, you? Yeah. How is life today without the alcohol, without having to depend on, on the alcohol to get through a day? Well, it's, it's my life is so much better. I, um, I've got a life actually, because mm -hmm. I don't have to depend on that as a crutch. Yeah. It was to forget all the bad things that were going on in my head, all the bad things that were going on in my life, and mm -hmm. all that's gone. 
So and I, I know you tell me now, like, if you smell alcohol, it actually makes you feel sick. Oh, yes, it does. It does. Yeah. And what are you doing today, then, with your life? Well, I know, but just for the viewers at home. You also help today, people, don't you? Yes. Today, I work at a helpline, and I help other people mm -hmm. um, with the same things that I suffered from. But this time, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're, not, you're working for an organisation that's helping people, but this time you are okay yourself. Yes, I am. So, but sure. why do you think some people, just, just going back to that, you, before, just for, if anyone's just joined us, Julie was actually an alcoholic, but she was working with a, an organisation that would help alcoholics. Yes. Why do you think some people end up working in those kind of jobs if they've got the problem themselves? Uh, it's, it's not something that you recognize. If you don't um, recognize it, if you don't admit that you've got a problem, it's mm. a secret for a start. Yeah. So um, owning up or recognizing that you have this problem, it's a shame. Yeah. So you just keep it secret. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the thing, the, the common thing between your, both your stories is actually admitting to yeah. and actually speaking about After, it as yes. well. Mm. Yes. Now, yeah, I, I was going to say as well with Julie, I think there's a lot of it when we look towards something that can heal is like the um, working to help other people yes. it's like you're looking for some kind of self-healing as well yeah. trying yes to yes oh, in yeah, that direction yes. I yeah. recognize that and and I think another good point is um, and it sounds exercise <laughs> yes yeah exercise the, the, and who was it that I come up with the celebrity I read out who was saying yoga and kung fu yeah <laughs> that, 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 as well. yeah, that's yeah. It, yeah I think that things that you can actually change your lifestyle and fill the gaps for where you used to drink or eat or whatever porn or whatever you had mm -hmm. it's like creating a whole new lifestyle that doesn't contain it's something those. positive yeah yeah that makes your body and soul feel good and nutrition as well good nutrition yeah. that's really important yeah okay mm -hmm. now joseph i know you, you found a youth group that helped you out so what, yes. how, how did your change happen and what well, kind of advice um, did you get there first i had to you know admit to myself that that wasn't right and I needed help. And also I joined a youth group and I found out that, okay, that isn't normal. You can actually be free from it because there are people your age that are not doing it. Mm -hmm. Whereas my mind frame before was, Psh, it's normal, you know, all men do it. That's the way you're like. Yeah. But yeah, I well, found- That's how the media portrays it as well, isn't yeah. it? Like, yes. Everyone does it, it's no yeah. problem. But your mind will tell you that it's a problem because, mm -hmm. you know, even when you were saying nutrition just now, and remember times in which I will miss meals because I'm just in front of the computer. So really? Yeah, it's so kind of really, really bad. But through the youth group, which, you know, also I did receive like that spiritual counseling as well, mm -hmm. you know, and there was a lot of elements that helped me to break free from it. Mm -hmm. But first thing that I had to do was accept and admit to myself that I, I have a problem and I want to be free from it. And then I was also willing to like receive the help from other people. Yeah. Mm. I think I think it's important to tell them, however, you know, whichever avenue you go down to get the help that you need. Some people, one thing works for other people, something else works. But it is important to look for that help and not to feel ashamed to admit to it. Because sometimes people, you know, there's nothing to be ashamed of. And I think it actually takes more like strength of character to actually admit that you have a problem than trying to hide it. And why sometimes people try to hide it is, you know, they, they, they're worried about what other people think of them or maybe that they've disappointed someone. But what about you? How about how you feel and how, you know, you're affecting yourself as well? So never be, you know, afraid to open up. There's lots and lots of organisations out there that can help you. There's lots of people that you can talk to. So never feel that you're alone because you, you weren't alone. You all found some avenue yeah. of getting help, didn't you? All yeah. of you. And, you know, mm -hmm. if, you, if you are going through something like this and you want some help, and you want to be pointed in the right direction, you can email me on chris at chrissybshow.tv. And also there's lots of organisations up on the website as well, chrissybshow.tv. That's the website address. We are running out of time, unfortunately. It's whizzed mm. by, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, first of all, all of you for being brave to talk about, you know, some things you do feel a bit sort of shy to talk about, but you were all brave. You all, like, <laughs> said everything, most things that you went through. So thanks very much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure people have been helped from that as well. And Nikki, thank you very much as well for, for your professional advice mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> so that's it for today's show. But don't forget, anytime you can contact me, Chris, at chrissybshow.tv. 
and we'll be back again. What day is it today? I've just Wednesday. got a blank. It's Wednesday today, Wednesday. right? <laughs> we will be back again on Friday. Now, we're not going to be talking about the show that is advertised on the website. We're going to be talking about divorce because, as you know, what happened with Tom Cruise and his lovely wife, we are going to be delving into this topic to see, you know, why this happens, why it's so common amongst celebrities. So I'm sure you're going to find that show very interesting. But for tonight, we'll leave you with our funny video of the day. Bye-bye for now. Food. You know, I just couldn't stop thinking about it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I went to the fridge and I opened up the meat drawer. You know what the meat drawer is, right? Yeah. What was in there? Well, I'll tell you what was in there. You know that bacon that's like maple? It's got maple flavor. The maple kind, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. I took that out and I thought, yeah. I know who would like that. Me. So I ate it. Oh, no. You kidding me? Nope. Not kidding. You know, I also noticed there was some beef in there. Yeah, you know, steak, you know, juicy. Well, I ate that too. <laughs> but I went back to the fridge just a few minutes ago and I put something together really special. You're going to love this one. I took some chicken. Yeah. I put some yeah, I yeah. put some cheese on it. And I Covered it with... Covered it with what? I covered it with cat treats. Yeah. Then guess what? What? I gave it to the cat. Ah! <laughs>